Hello folks, welcome back to True Stories with me, Sherry Weens. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, click that little red button below and if you'd like to be notified of my posts first, click the bell right beside it. It'll send you a notification. Okay, so I'm doing the update this morning on um, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey, The Making of a Murderer. Now this um, this all started um, back when Stephen Avery was 22 years old. Um, he was he was wrongfully convicted of a rape, and he spent 18, almost 20 years of his life behind bars, um, where he was exonerated on a DNA test, and that that was able to free him the first time around that he was um, sort of wrongfully convicted. Um, after that had happened, he decided he wanted to take out a lawsuit on the Manitowoc County. Um, that lawsuit was for $36 million, so a huge payout for um, somebody who was wrongfully convicted. Now, the second time around has sort of been a lot more fabricated on um, the state side, the county side, the forensic side. Basically, every side you're supposed to be able to trust that they're on your side was completely against um, putting away a man that was that was innocent. Um, so, so the state um, appealed many, many, many times the second overturning of the conviction of Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. Brad Schimmel is the state district lawyer there. Um, absolutely brutal, this guy. I don't know why he held on to sort of um, trying to find or trying to make it seem as if Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey were definitely the uh, right people to be in jail for this situation of Teresa Halbeck's murder. Um, however, they did not go about their investigation properly, and there was a lot of evidence that um, seemed to just show up in places that it, it wasn't, it shouldn't have even been. Um, specifically, there was a bullet that sticks out in my mind that was on one side of the garage on the Avery property that was said to have b bone and brain matter on the bullet, as well as, um, you know, blood fragments and, and blood specimen stuff. Anyways, they brought this into the forensic lab and the forensic lab um, said that they did, um, you know, thorough testing on this, but, and their conclusion was that it was bone and brain matter and blood when it turned out that um, the lawyer that Stephen Avery had chosen to hire for, for overturning his conviction, her name is Kathleen Zellner, an amazing woman who's just done so much good work in helping other people who are wrongfully convicted. Um, she's so good that she will literally not leave one stone unturned. She will literally go through every little single piece, analyze it, go and redo it, refabricate it, um, and, and multiple times in order to see if she could get the same results as the state was getting through their specialists. So regardless, um, this Brad Schimmel has just had such a, a hard on, excuse my language, for sort of keeping the Avery family and Dassey boy behind bars. Meanwhile, this evidence doesn't even point towards But your them. constitutional right is violated the second that the prosecution doesn't or withholds evidence, doesn't hand over evidence that is deserve to be given to the defense to give them a chance to defend themselves. You're taking away their right to a fair process of trial doing that, withholding evidence or um, not properly even going through some evidence like the forensic lab said that they did. Meanwhile, you know, they, they did not do that testing properly. And that woman sat in court and actually testified to that, that she did do her testings properly. And that was just a bold-faced lie. So Avery himself has spent over 10,000 days in jail. And, you know, um, Brennan Dassey was uh, spent over 4,000 days in jail. We're going on like 13 years of this now, guys. So absolutely brutal. Um, at one point... Um, there is another person that's brought into this, and his name is Bobby Dassey. Now, Bobby Dassey's computer had a ton of, of pornographic searches and some pretty heinous pictures of women being 
tortured and choked and decapitated and all kinds of absolutely brutal, um, you know, pictures and things to be searching. And this wasn't something that he just searched for, you know, an hour once in a while. It was diligent all the time, hundreds and thousands of hours based on these, um, you know, these these heinous crimes and pictures and, and brutal situations that he was sort of in putting this in his mind. Now, here's what Kathleen Zellner has kind of put together with the fact that um, she's kind of piecing together the fact that Bobby Dassey had an opportunity when he saw Teresa Hallbeck pull onto the property to take some photos of the, um, the vehicles that they were trying to sell, which was um, a completely honest way for her to be there. Um, what, what seems more plausible that happened was that um, Bobby Dassey saw Teresa pull up in onto the Avery property to take some photos and also saw her leave. And he shortly thereafter, within seconds, left behind her within 30 seconds. So as she's traveling up the highway and Kathleen Zellner and her team did recreate this, um, Teresa Hallbeck is just going at a normal speed down Highway Q. And then all of a sudden you've got Bobby Dassey flying up behind her to see if they can meet at the same time. And doesn't he actually pull up and manage to reach her? And if 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 she had known who Bobby Dassey was in the fact that he was connected to the Avery family and that she had done some photo shoots for them, he kind of knew, she kind of knew who he was, you know, in a sense. So he kind of, it seems like he kind of flagged her over and she probably pulled over. And then he convinced her that he had a photo shoot for her to do. And if she could just pull down a little bit further, you know, and so that's where we, I now believe too, after seeing um, Kathleen Zellner recreate this, um, you know, this, uh, this scene, I feel like this is more plausible that, you know, the fact that Bobby Dassey had so many twisted things in his computer and he was looking at so many derogatory crazy things online that it's more plausible that that something like this happened to her from somebody like him versus somebody like Stephen Avery who just had a professional relationship with her to come to his salvage yard to take photos to put into the auto trader I mean you know this just it doesn't make any sense why why um, they would point the finger so strongly at Avery um, with something so strong in Bobby Dassey's favor. They have to call out the coroner. The coroner is sort of the highest up in the in the um, chain of law enforcement in a sense. And, and they have a higher up compared to the sheriffs and stuff like that. So she phones to find out why she was never called to go to the area to find out, you know, what these bones were and to take notes of them and bring them in for examination. She was never called. She decides to call the state and say like, hey, um, you know, I, I heard on the TV that there's some bones that were found. How come nobody called me? And they were like, oh, we, we just overlooked calling you. You know, we're sorry about that. So, you know, she says, okay, well, can I come out to the scene tonight? And they said, no, the scene is closed for the night. Um, and she said, okay, well, in the morning. So, um, she gets a phone call in the morning to come in for a meeting with a detective. And so doesn't she go down thinking she's going to get some information on, you know, whose bones these are and stuff like that. She ends up being told by the police that if she decides to, to go to the scene, she examines the scene, she does anything with the scene, she goes to try to find the bones or anything like that, she'll be arrested. And I'm like, seriously? And then I find out that the law in, in, in that area is that she is the highest of, um, like the state of Wisconsin gives the highest law enforcement official, um, you know, to the coroner. So she could have actually in turn arrested the officers, which I wish she would have done. I honestly feel like, but then she said that she started to get, you know, death threats and they live in a very small place and, she just really didn't want to deal with all of the harassment that was coming because people kept calling her and telling her not to get involved in this and, you know, to stay out of it and stuff. And like she has an obligation um, in her 
in her job to do this and they're telling her to not do her job um it looks really shady and suspicious right so long story short kathleen zellner is she has filed um a motion it was like over 1200 pages you guys um so she filed a motion to try to get this back into court it ended up going into the seven circuit judges and there was a three panel judge that was chosen now, out of those three, there were two that decided that, yes, Stephen Avery and Brennan Dassey deserve to be overturned. And, well, at least Brennan Dassey's situation was for sure overturned. They hadn't quite gotten to Stephen Avery's yet. But um, his was overturned. Yet they're still like Brad Schimmel, who's the state attorney, turns around every single time and puts in a motion against whatever motion was just found in order to stop the release of Brennan Dassey, which is just brutal because not only was this kid a minor when they were questioning him and stuff, he's um, they both remain in prison right now, sadly. Kathleen Zellner is still fighting this. Um, Stephen Avery has no chance of, of release. He's never eligible for parole. And he's been locked up 31 years out of 56. And then, of course, Brennan Dassey, he is eligible in 2048 at the age of 59 for parole. And he's already been in jail for 12 years out of his 29-year life. I mean, that's, like, brutal. Um, so I wish I had a bit better update as far as what's happened with these people, but it looks like it's still in process of going through Kathleen Zellner and going through the courts. So that... They, they decided not to overturn him. But the very last step now is federal court, the Supreme Court. And if Kathleen Zellner can sort of darken their doorway and take this case to them, hopefully they will accept it. The Supreme Court um, takes in thousands of applications for each year, and yet they only only ever see like maybe a hundred cases um, a judge at the Supreme Court and hopefully get it reheard with all the new evidence that points to other people that that could have been involved a lot of different things weren't exercised on Stephen Avery's lawyers part which kind of makes them look a little incompetent in my in my opinion um, I feel like they could have worked a lot harder knowing that they had someone's life in their hands but Regardless, um, I will stay on top of this case for you guys and I will share some more as I hear it. So if you enjoyed this video update with me, a thumbs up would be a great support, guys. And tell me your thoughts. Do you feel like they should be let out now or do you feel like they should have to wait for the process to finish through the court system before they're released? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please put that in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click that little red button below. And if you want to be notified of my posts, click the bell right beside it. It'll send you a notification. Thanks for watching, folks. Stay safe out there. Bye for now.